This is the digital music trends coverage of South by Southwest 2014, an interview with Dave Zierler, president at Engrooves. DMT's coverage of South by Southwest is brought to you by Omniphone, the leading B2B cloud music provider powering global music services including Sony Music Unlimited, Guvera, Rara and Sirius XM. Find out more on Omniphone.com and by Music Graph, the world's first knowledge engine for music, available as a consumer app and as a graph API for developers. Check out MusicGraph.com or Developer.MusicGraph.com. Hello everyone and welcome to DMT's coverage of South by Southwest 2014 and it's a real pleasure to be here with uh, David Zierler who is the president of Ingroove. Si hi David and thanks for joining me, how's it going? Uh, it's going fantastic, thanks for having me. So uh, you know we're going to talk about Ingroove's uh, in, in depth but first of all for the few people I guess uh, that listen to the show that may not know what the company is all about so can you give us a bit of an overview first? Sure, um, you know Ingroove's was uh, started in 2002 and uh, you know kind of very high level it was a end-to-end -end, uh, software platform that right. kind of gave us the innovation and in what we were doing to basically solve the problem of digital distribution of media. Um, and it was uh, the whole kind of intuition behind it was to basically have a very transparent, flexible, and cost-effective solution. Um, there have been many, many iterations of the company as we went along, and, and you know most of the early years were uh, spent developing the, the back-end platform. Um, in 2008, we did a strategic partnership with Universal Music Group, uh, where they invested invested uh, a significant amount of capital in Ingrooves and um, basically, you know, enabled us to build out their back-end digital distribution network for them in North America. Yeah. Um, and, you know, as as Ingrooves kind of developed, we have created three divisions to our company. Yeah. Uh, we have our software division, um, which basically has three main clients. Obviously, Universal Music Group in North America being one of them, uh, Ingrooves Music Group, and then we also have an ebook company called Inscribe. So we basically have separate platforms uh, for each one of our divisions in terms of you know all the back end functionalities and what we're doing on the development side. Um, and then I run Ingrooves Music Group, which is basically servicing our independent record labels and. Yeah management companies throughout the world. That's great. And so the, the music side of things is quite complex because you, you do uh, distribution, but you do a lot more than that as well. So you do a full suite of label services. So that, that's sort of uh, something that has really evolved over the last uh, couple of years and, and, and uh, blown up uh, around the world. So how have you seen that uh, space of like, providing just more, more than just distribution evolve for, for you guys? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's definitely a, a very competitive landscape, uh, especially globally now, because right. as the world shrinks and, and what people are doing online, how they connect with fans and consumers is... Uh, you know, becoming a, a lot smaller marketplace. So, and we kind of have Ingrooves Music Group subdivided into four separate divisions. We have our, our core distribution services, um, and we have our in-residence artist services, which you, were, yeah. which you were mentioning in terms of where we're doing deals directly with artists, you know, basically coming to us through management companies. And yeah. then we have our international division, everything uh, ex-North America, which Alex Branson runs out of the UK. Um, and then we just started at the end of last year our publishing division. Um, the artist services division is a, uh, is a is a key growth area for us and something we're focusing on uh, right now we have eight dedicated uh, people in that group yeah. um, you know with product managers uh, a radio promotions person online and brand partnership uh, a sync licensing person and obviously utilizing all that we do on our core business which is our digital distribution and physical distribution network and then um, we've enhanced our physical distribution uh, capacities ex North America with uh, a strategic partner that we did with Republic of Music recently, which was announced about a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, so it's a pretty integral part of what we're doing and how we're growing the business. And and uh, obviously, it's a, it's a competitive landscape. There's, uh, you know, all of our uh, competitors are, are in this space. You know, I sure. feel that, you know, we are, you know, where we sit right now is as a truly independent company versus a lot of what we're doing. We're a lot more flexible in the types of deals that we can do and yeah. also the level of service that we can provide. You know, we're not uh, beholden to a lot of legacy see, uh, you know, kind of values and things that, that happen and, yeah. and, and people having to go through, uh, you know, 78 chains of command that, you know, we feel we do what's right and have a collaborative effort with uh, the managers and or, you know, labels that we're doing the deals with. 
Yeah, absolutely. And so looking at you have a portfolio of uh, an incredible number of companies that I think accounted from the website in terms of label partners uh, or you know, labels that you, you work with. Yeah, over 175 labels uh, uh, of like, you know, incredible Sasho in the independent space. So is that just, uh, you know, the, the, the type of client list you have? Is that a byproduct of, of the company that you are? Do you actively seek those uh, uh, really great labels or how Absol does that work? Absolutely. I think, look, I think it's, uh, you know, a testament to, you know, what Ingrus was doing from the early days and then also part of our strategic acquisition of Fontana in 2012 and kind of beefing yeah. up what we were doing, you know, which uh, brought fantastic labels to the fold as well. Um, you know, I think it's, you know, a, a lot of it is the level of service, right? We pride ourselves on that. You know, we could have the best back-end technology, yet if people aren't getting the level of service and people that they can yeah. talk to on a daily basis that they know, you know, people are out there, you know, working the marketing efforts, whether it's, you know, kind of our core distribution stuff from the iTunes to Spotify's, Amazon's, YouTube's, you know, Best Buy's, Walmart's, all the independent yeah. uh, physical retailers, they're not gonna sign with us. I, I think it's a testament to our people and I think it's a, a core piece of what we do. And, and as we've grown, you know, when I started with with Ingrooves back in at the end of 2007 we were about 35 people we're 175 people now wow. across all our business lines and how we service our clients to technology innovation to uh, to service and I think it's a, a key component to being able to to grow our company take that next phase and and we're very uh, nimble and flexible and being able to adjust um, our strategy and uh, adding resources as we see fit to where the business is going yeah, and uh, you know, crowdfunding has been the word of the of the day for for the last few months when it comes to uh, uh, some music projects, anyway. So, uh, have you also worked on the distribution of some projects that were crowdfunded, and how do you see that space? Um, I, I guess I would say crowdfunded. Um, you know, we're putting out a record this week from Three Eleven, who had fantastic success with Pledge Music, and right. um, you know, it's it's been a, a fantastic endeavor. They've uh, you know, there's been a lot of uh, capital contributed. They're going their albums are going to sound scan and you know we're going to have a, a pretty significant you know first week where i think we can do upwards of 40,000 first week of wow. a, of an independent record um they were signed to a label on the on the last album and i feel that you know we can either you know get to that level or above as a truly independent and you know their economical splits are, are fantastic for them and and we have our whole team behind it and then also working with benji and his team on the pledge music side has just been a uh you know uh, groundbreaking and fantastic and i think that this you know we're in the early days of that piece and, and consumers you know really uh, engaging and the bands engaging yeah. with with the fans and giving them unique product and I think that's kind of the wave of the future as streaming grows and the money in those pots grow and the way bands and uh, artists can you know interact with their fans and give them unique experiences is kind of you know where this business is going yeah, absolutely. And so, uh, looking at uh, the size of the company that you were talking about, there's also a big publishing arm, uh, Ingrooves, uh, which is a, a pretty important, like a pretty fundamental to the company. Yep. So, uh, publishing has been uh, uh, like label services, I guess, has been one of the fields that has had the, the most buzz about it because you know we've seen lots of big acquisitions, uh, people really uh, trying to get as much catalog as possible. So, how are you seeing the evolution of publishing in the last couple of years, and also the perception of uh, that uh, that used to be seen as a dark art, I guess, yeah. but now it's becoming more and more into yeah, I mean into look, we're, we're in the very early stages um, uh, you know we started it up we kind of started doing the initial diligence uh, with Olivier Chastain in New York and which has enabled us now we are uh, opening our New York office April 1st which we're really awesome. excited about so we'll have eight people uh, in New York and Olivier's uh, building out his team um, you know we're super excited about that he's closed uh, you know I think close to 80 deals so far yeah. you know obviously leveraging off of you know uh, existing in groups clients sure. um, and then uh, obviously leveraging his network of clients you know we signed Stephen Marley we did a deal with uh, Jamie and Dirty Hit um, so there's some great stuff you know early on yet you know we are very in the early stages uh, and uh, we're, we're uh, anxiously awaiting revenue to come in and all of that good stuff so yeah. you know I, I think there'll be more to report by the end of the year and kind of our evolution and kind of where we're gonna add pieces to the puzzle but it's uh, it's a huge focus to us uh, as well as the artist services piece and then obviously you know what we develop on the technology side for our digital distribution network and how we service our our bigger labels on that front. Absolutely. And looking at the streaming services, uh, we've seen uh, I've seen the mixed reports from independent labels as to you know it's, it's really varies. Some labels are super happy with the, what they get, and some labels are not so happy. So are you seeing uh, some labels wanting to still do windowing of releases uh, uh, and maybe delaying this, the, the the release on Spotify or audio? Or look, I think it, I think it depends on the label. Yet we advise against it. I think look, yeah. I think there's been. Um, 
um, we're very bullish on streaming, right? And I think yeah. it's it's a patience game. Um, as the as the pot grows and the and the number of subscribers grow, there will obviously be a lot more money in the pool than we've kind of seen that in in uh, select countries like Norway and Sweden yeah. and have great success and obviously deterring piracy as well. Um, you know, I feel that you know people need to be a little bit patient. I think that there are you know accounts that we work with yeah. that you know that that consume a lot of music and and the deals aren't as favorable as they should be um, yet I feel that you know we're going in the right direction and we're very bullish on it and I think it's you know part of you know the artists understanding you know it's a new way of marketing and engaging with the fan and there's other ways to capitalize on it and you have to use this as a different tool and your, your, your marketing spend can be different yeah you know it doesn't need to be all front-loaded this is something that you know is is going to take a little bit of time yet as as the United States matures especially in this market and you know the consumers you know adapt and shift um, you know the, the artists and the community will have to, to adapt and shift as well of course uh, we talked uh, briefly earlier about label services and you have an in-residence program that yep. started uh, so uh, when did that start and, and how did the, how did that take shape so it took shape it was uh, something that we started talking about after we bought Fontana kind of leveraging off of the scale of uh, kind of merging two pretty sizable independent companies yeah. in that space and um, um, Brian Mead, who uh, heads up our in residence artist services group, was uh, the VP of marketing for Fontana. Right. And, um, you know, we started, it took us about six to eight months of really plotting out what we wanted his team to look like and him really taking the reins of building out the artist services team. Yeah. And we don't want to inundate with too much product, right? Because that's sure. all about service. So he'll put out, you know, his group will put out about, you know, 15 to, to 20 albums this year. Great. So, so it's, it's, a, yeah, it's, it's very selective. You know, we do the deals that we feel are right. And, you know, we're, you know, we're doing uh, very, you know, favorable fees for the, for the artists, um, obviously. And then also commensurate with the level of work that we're doing and we're funding the marketing budgets. You know, yeah. we're not, we're not in the game of, oh, we're going to pay for the making of records and things yeah. like that. It's just not what we do. And then Brian obviously leverages off of, you know, uh, what we do on the core distribution side, which uh, Amy Dietz, who's our general manager, um, who came over to us from ADA when we purchased Fontana yeah. um, to, to kind of run all of our, uh, you know, label services, sales, marketing, yeah. uh, core distribution, digital operations, physical operations. So it's, you know, it, it, it's a very cohesive unit and team between, you know, all four units of the Ingrus Music Group. And we kind of leverage off of everything. You know, last year we put out the, the Mazzy Star album. Yeah. Uh, digitally and physically globally so leveraging off of Alex's team internationally and had had great success uh, all around the world with that album yeah and, uh, and one of the the uh, roles that has become uh, even more central you're talking about you know taking on artists directly and it's yep. been that of the manager you know managers have really taken on so much more than they ever used to uh, it feels like at least yep. uh, and so you know how, how have you seen that evolve and also in your your own relationship as a company with your artist managers uh, are they are they becoming more hands-on than ever before yeah I think the the, the managers that we want to deal with have to be hands-on because right. I think it's you know you have to complete that whole circle of you know who's involved in the project right because yeah. you know we we fulfill our role and we have a lot of creative things that we do yet you know we are a distribution sales and service company right sure. so there's you know there's other pieces to the puzzle and you know we want to be in business with the you know where the artist is going to work the manager is going to work and we have the right team and it's a very collaborative effort and we're all on the same page you know as from every phase of the project from you know six to eight months before the album comes out and how we're going to strategize and yeah. roll the thing out so it's yeah. you know everybody's kind of all ducks need to be in a row and the manager is a key component to that to, to making sure you know all the trains stay on the track sure looking at the international expansion as well are you seeing can you foresee the company uh, becoming more international and and you know starting to deal directly with uh, more territories as well yep absolutely uh, this year you know kind of where we're focusing and investing resources we're gonna hire somebody in Germany this year Great. we just added we're adding another person in uh, in London as well that will deal directly with Republican music and handle all of our physical uh, releases uh, directly with them and manage that with them yeah um, we are uh, gonna hire somebody in Australia
Australia and New Zealand as well sure. um, to to have an entryway in that to either sign content to also be on the ground marketing. So those are kind of the, the first initial markets probably have something in the Nordic region as well because yeah. obviously have had great success there with the emergence of the, the streaming services. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm, I'm sure Australia needs all the help it, needs, uh, it can get at the moment with a, uh, a right on 11% drop in the market yeah. uh, in 2013. So that's not great news for them. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but hopefully that's going to start to be made up of streaming services. And, uh, and finally, so what, what is exciting you about, uh, you know, 2014 and beyond for the company? You know, there's, uh, you have a lot of uh, things, a lot of place to juggle, I guess, yep. and a lot of different parts of the company. But is there maybe one or two specific fields that you feel are going to be expanding in particular and that you're ex excited about? Well, I mean, look, I'm, like I said, I'm ex really excited about our international growth and what we're doing there. And, uh, you know, kind of, you know, Alex being able to expand his team. I'm really excited about the artist services. And then, look, I'm always excited about our labels. I love yeah. our labels. And that was the core of our business that always, you know, that's kind of, you know, what got in grooves. And that's what, what you know, when Fontana, the same thing on the early days, you know, our, our labels are key to our success and kind of the day to day. We love them. And then obviously, you know, look, the artist services is exciting. It's a little bit more of that kind of shiny light out there. You know, you get bigger releases and stuff like that, which are a lot of fun to be a part of. I think, you know, you know, this year in 2014, you know, will have its challenges because of, you know, as we sh shift from, you know, uh, downloads and, you know, physical CDs to, to more of a streaming consumption model, you know, the revenue model shift. And it's, it's all about being in the right spot and having, you know, the right company to service your labels or artists yeah. or uh, international partners and so on and so forth. Because, you know, in the U.S., I mean, you know, downloads and CDs are down, you know, about 17 percent over last year. Yet I've, I'm still very bullish on where the market is going because, yeah. you know, given given time and patience, you know, there will be, I feel, a lot more money in the pool for, for artists and labels to share. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it's uh, yeah, it's an interesting picture also because uh, every single country has a very different story to tell. Yep. And so in that sense, it's actually very hard to decide the direction of your company because uh, in Germany, we've seen it still say 70% plus physical. Yep. No, in the U.S. is completely different. So I guess that's going to be really the challenge for an international company to work out all those bits and really make sure they have it down when it comes to knowing the international market. Yeah, and I think it's, uh, you know, for us, I think that the great part about us is, you know, as we've grown, we've stayed completely independent. So we yeah. can adjust on the fly pretty quickly. And, you know, we don't have to go through, like I said, a lot of layers to, to make decisions. You know, we are, uh, you know, we, we feel that we have a, a good handle on the marketplace and where things are going. And when we need to make adjustments we just do it yeah um and, and we don't uh you know have to get all the approvals to do it we just you know we yeah. feel that we've had enough experience to to make the right things and do the right things for our clients that's great well thanks david it was a pleasure talking to you and of course uh, if it's uh, if you, you want to check out what ingroove's do in more detail you can go and uh, uh have a look on uh, ingroove's.com uh, and uh, i'm sure you can find all the contact details there for the respective markets in the country you're in and and uh, make sure that you get in touch if you're interested uh, thanks so much for your time absolutely thank you andre and thanks for listening to the dmt coverage of south by southwest you can find out more on digitalmusictrends.com